Welcome to the second episode of the Hands On Experience podcast. I'm your host, Reggie Hansen, and thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm going to repeat again on why I call this show the Hands On Experience. There's two reasons. One is I'm going to be hands on educating you, coaching you, and teaching you about leadership development as well as career transitions. The second one is the obvious. My last name is Hanson, so it was, it was very fitting to call it the hands-on uh, experience. So I'm excited about all the content and, and education that I'm going to give you. Hopefully, what you take away from this episode, what you take away from each episode is something you can use in your different roles in your job as you're going through career changes and challenges, transitions, that can help you succeed and achieve those goals that you're trying to achieve, Right? So today, we're going to talk about core beliefs for leaders, okay? Every leader has to have strong core beliefs. If you want to be the leader, the strong leader that your team needs you to be, then you must have strong core beliefs. And if you don't, you must be willing to change, okay? You must be willing to make those changes in order to have strong core beliefs to lead your team successfully, okay? And if you're not confident in your beliefs, you can't have beliefs and not be confident in them. But if you're not confident in your beliefs, your team will recognize that. And they will, be, they will not be confident in you um, as a leader. So you must be confident in your core beliefs, in your strong core beliefs, in order for your team to believe you, to, to believe that you can lead them successfully to accomplish their goals. Okay? So what are core beliefs? You know, a lot of people don't really know or understand what core beliefs really are and, um, and how they work, okay? So core beliefs are a person's most central ideas about themselves, others, and the world. Your core beliefs are what you use to make decisions every single day. When you get up out of the bed, your core beliefs are going to decide whether you hit that snooze button or whether you get up whether you stick to that morning routine or whether you don't, uh, whether you get out on time for work or whether you do not. All the decisions you make will come back to your core beliefs on whether you make the right decision or the wrong decision. Okay, These beliefs, they act as a lens through which every situation and life experience is seen. Okay, And because of this, people with different core beliefs might be in the same situation, but think, feel, and behave very differently. And what I mean by that, let's say you have two people going down the same path, right? And they come to a fork in the road, right? One person may go left, the other person may go right. Now, depending on their core beliefs, both of them could have took the right direction. Depending on, depending on their core beliefs, both of them could have took the wrong direction. Or one person could have took the right direction and the other the wrong direction, depending on their core beliefs. Okay. Even if your core belief is inaccurate, it still shapes how a person sees the world and how they make decisions. Okay. Harmful core beliefs lead to negative thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, whereas rational core beliefs lead to balanced reactions. So that's why it's very important to have rational beliefs. Beliefs that can guide you the right direction, that can guide you to achieve the goals, guide you to make the right decisions. Okay, now, how do you know if you have strong core beliefs or negative, weak negative core beliefs? Well, it depends on what's happening to you once you make decisions. If you're constantly making the bad decisions, if you're constantly making the wrong turn um, and, and the wrong things are happening, that means you don't have the right core beliefs and you need to make a change. Okay, you need to make a change. And one thing about core beliefs is they're attached to your emotional intelligence, okay? And core, having strong core beliefs will allow you to be in tune to your senses. Now, I just mentioned emotional, emotional intelligence. I'm not going to go into that deeply today. I will on a lot more episodes because as I told you before, uh, I'm a big advocate of emotional intelligence. But uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about having, having senses and being in tune with your senses. And that's one thing what strong core beliefs will allow you to do, Okay? It's important, it is an important skill, I should say, for all leaders knowing how to identify 
emotional responses. And part of that is being in tune to your senses. Okay? Now, what does that mean? This means paying attention to what you see and hear, not what you think you see and hear. Okay? Let me say that again. Being in tune to your senses means paying attention to what you see, you actually see and hear, not what you think you see and hear. All right? Your beliefs, values, drivers, and rules act as a filter, distorting and deleting other, what otherwise might be important information. Okay? So if, you're not, so if you're looking at a situation and you're listening to people talking and you're not accurately getting what the information is and what's being said and you're just kind of vaguely listening and you think they're saying something, then that's where the problem comes in. All right, that's where, the, that's where the trains are gonna crash, okay? The higher level of your self-awareness, the greater your ability to recognize and distinguish between what is fact and what is the result of a filter. That comes down to listening, 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 okay? Listening to understand, not listening to respond, all right? So now, one of the first things that you must be able to do is recognize your map, all right? And the map, understand, the map is not the territory, all right? People act from their, people act from their map as opposed to reality. And if you recognize your map, then you can recognize reality and understand there is a difference, okay? When you recognize your map, you open up many possibilities of seeing the world in new ways but you first must be in tune to yourself, okay? So the second one is you must be able to gauge the mood, eyes, with your eyes, by seeing. Pay attention to how people look at one another while they are speaking or listening. Does a speaker look at everyone or just focus on one individual, okay? Do listeners stay focused or do the eyes wander? Do you see people smile, smirk, frown, or glare? Okay, be in tune to what people are doing with your eyes. See them, see what's actually going on, okay? The next one is, is being able to gauge the mood with your ears and hearing, all right? Tune in to the sounds of the room, all right? Listen, actively listen. When a person speaks, is there, is there quiet except for the person's voice? Or do you hear people moving in their chairs and, and things like that? You know, when you're in a room with your team or with, if you're in a room with your coworkers or your peers, you know, recognize these things. Do people speak stridently or hesitantly? Huh? You got to recognize that. Do you hear a lot of mumbling conversations while someone is talking? Do people yell, whisper, moan, or interrupt? Okay? That's another way to be in tune with your senses to know what's actually going on, not what you think is going on. Okay? And last, you got to have the ability to assess information that is collected, okay? All right? Now, dealing with your team. This is all comes back to dealing with your team when you're with your team and you're all in different, uh, working on different projects together and, and you're trying to figure out and be in tune to what's going on with them and what's actually happening with them, okay? So you got to be able to have the ability to assess information that's collected. You know, so now what does that mean? You know, was the team enthusiastic? Was your team enthusiastic? Hmm? Did they seem fade or did they seem pleased that man management was willing to try some new ideas? Were they pleased that you were that you were willing to try new ideas? Did they appear to want to work together as a group to implement those changes? Did they all appear to grasp the importance of making those changes? If you want to be a great leader, you must strive to develop these skills and qualities. Having strong core beliefs, being in tuned with your senses, is going to allow you to lead your team to greater heights. Okay? And again, I'm going to go back to emotional intelligence, self-awareness. You've got to be aware of you and what you're about, what your core beliefs are, what you're in tune to before you can be 
before you can have the ability to be in tune to what's going on around you. Okay? And again, you have to be able to decipher what's real and what you think is real in terms of dealing with your coworkers, dealing with your team, dealing with people. All right? Be able to understand the difference because that's going to allow you to take the information and do what you need to do with it as a leader to help your team, organization, or company uh, be successful. All right? That's a wrap for this show. Uh, some shows are going to be short. Some will be a little longer. Uh, but, again, I have so much information that I want to share with you, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. Um, if you ever want to or need to reach out to me, just shoot me an email at reggie.hanson at hansoncoaching.com. Um, if you want any more detail, do you want me to elaborate further on a certain episode, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me, contact me. Um, I would love to share even more ideas with you in terms of what the subject matter was for that particular episode. Uh, but anyways, have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.